Hi, um, it's good to be here. Thanks for having me here. Uh, so, first off, I'm, I have no talent whatsoever in terms of making good looking slides. So you'll, you're, you're, you're gonna be stuck with this hideous thing for the whole presentation, I'm afraid, all right? So, uh, my presentation is in two parts, all right? And the first part, uh, to be forthcoming with you is going to be something of a plug for my company, Momo Central. You can find us at momocentral.com. I've been told that uh, this would probably be relevant to some of you if some of you are a uh, freelance web developer or are considering being a freelance web developer. That's the people that uh, will probably be interested in, and you might be interested in what we do as well. Right, so that's going to be the first part, and I'm going to jump into that. Right, so I'm going to start this story at the a long, long time ago, not that long ago, really. We used to be called Mokomomo, and we used to be a uh, regular IT agency, consultancy, sweatshop, whatever you call it nowadays, which is to say that uh, people who need IT projects done, they come to us, and then we'll sit down with them, we'll uh, come up with pages and pages of specs for them, and then uh, we'll give them a project manager, and then they'll agree to pay us a certain sum of money, and then we'll basically try to build something good for them, right? But it turns out that this is kind of a shitty job, right? I don't know if, I don't, I don't know if any of you guys have done anything like this before, but it's pretty bad. I would have quit if we had to do it for one more year, right? So uh, we kind of went past that, right? So there are a lot of problems, right, with this, you know, politics, 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 right? Clients, we can sit down all day and we can complain about how, how clients don't trust us, right? How clients are always constantly trying to get us to build stuff for free, how clients are, you know, delaying payments for like the fourth or fifth month, you know, and how clients are always trying to push blame on us, right? And then there's hidden costs because you need to manage this complexity. The complexity involved in agency work, right? It's, there are two parts, right? There's the complexity of engineering, right? That's what you need to build for your client. And there's the complexity of managing their expectations, managing, making sure you don't lose out, you know, making sure you don't go bankrupt because the clients, they are used to not trusting the guys, so they will bankrupt you if they can, right? So which, which adds up being hidden costs because you need people who can do this thing, not just the guys who can do the, the programming work, right? So the money is split, and then the product doesn't end up usually very nice even if you pay a lot of money because of all this extra stuff, and sometimes bad decisions get made. Happens all the time. Feature creep, right? Self-explanatory, outsourceception. That's a term we kind of coined because we worked, we've worked with, with an agency before where it is extremely apparent that they have absolutely no real contact at all with the guys that are actually <coughs> doing the work. So we literally were talking to people who are, who are the project managers of the project manager of the project manager of the project manager of the project manager of the guy in India that's actually writing the code, right? So this actually happens, right? And it's really, really bad, right? So yeah, shitty job, right? So we stopped after a while and then we sat down and we thought to ourselves, uh, can, we do, can we fix this, you know? This is, the problems are structural, right? It's kind of set up to fail. The guys, the agencies who do well are those that do well in spite of how, how, how screwed up the whole thing is, right? So the question is, you know, can we make contractual work actually work, you know, without having all of these terrible things happen, right? So that was kind of the problem we set out to, 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 to uh, solve. So after a few iterations, we settled on being a freelancer platform. There are a few reasons for it. We believe in small teams. So, you know, uh, clients always think that when they have uh, a big system, systems don't usually get very complex nowadays, uh, with exceptions, of course, but big systems, they think that they need to get an agency that has armies of programmers you know, standing behind them. But we were the guys who did some of these before, and the truth is that you can have three guys just not sleep, and you, you, you just you know, get the thing done. So small teams are actually really good. right? So we believe in small teams, and then we don't want layers of communication. Right, so the, the, this, is, this is the thing about freelancing that appeals to us. It's a freelancer talking to the client. No more layers, right? That's it, right? And also, online workflows are happening nowadays. Internet is getting better. Tools are getting better, right? And we're particularly inspired by free software communities, you know? They are people who are literally everywhere in different time zones, and they can work together and build a good product, right? So these things are happening, right? These people need the tools, and then they are really good programmers, so they've made the tools, right? So we think that uh, this kind of collaboration is going to become more widespread, and the freelancers are the guys that are going to benefit from it. So, so we started a freelancing platform. Of course, there's still some uh, problems with freelancing. This might be familiar to some of you if, you, if you, any of you have freelanced before. So we started a freelancing platform, and uh, we made it our mission to 
make it as good as possible, of course, right? So uh, we need to solve all these problems, right? So we do we design the process, the design our models of Prandi around eliminating distractions, basically, right? We don't want people to talk about, about, we don't want politics at all. We don't want people to be hung up about billing, and we don't want that kind of thing, right? So right now, this is kind of our pitch for freelancers that we are able to, to, to do now. You get paid, you get paid on time, because we pay you, right? And then we build the client. So the goal is that you do not uh, need to talk billing with your client. We take that completely out of the communication. You should be talking to your client about design, about code, about getting your product done, right? And uh, no unpaid feature creep. This is another thing that we do uh, insist on uh, in our methodology is that we insist on paying by time, which is that if you put in 10 hours, you get paid for 10 hours. If you put in 20 hours, you get paid for 20 hours. We don't do uh, scope-based paying, so to speak, right? Because that's uh, that's the source of many of our, our own nightmares back in the day, right? So we pay by time, and also uh, no bidding against cheap and bad people. We select our guys, right? Which I'll be talking a, a bit more about in the second part, right? But basically, we make sure all our guys meet a certain minimal level of algorithmic complex uh, algorithmic competency, right? We make sure that they have certain level of quality, and then we match make centrally. It means each client gets like three profiles, four profiles, which we recommend, which we uh, recommend for good fit, basically, right? And we negotiate rates and so on and so forth, right? So we're able to do some of these because of something called we call real-time collaboration, which is to say that what happens is that you, uh, the way you work with your client is that you agree on time slots with them, right? So in these time slots, you're like their employee. We encourage communication, we encourage them to check on you, to, to ask you for ideas, to call you for meetings, <coughs> right, to, so that they know that you're doing your work, right? So in your time slot with them, you have to be available, you have to be working on their stuff full-time, no multitasking, right? But the, the, the result is a certain level of uh, accountability that we can guarantee the client, and so we can make sure that they pay up, basically, right? So. Uh, and then we have a talent manager, which is a guy uh, that manages this relationship, right? So we don't do project management. We call it something different for pur like purposely, right? So what happens is that this talent manager is, is um, responsible for teaching the client how to manage you if the client doesn't, doesn't know how to, recommending tools, recommending processes, you know, the things that we found, right? The things that have worked for other people, we try to teach it to the client. Also deal with disputes, negotiate rates, protect you in case of uh, problematic clients. So we have the weight of the organization on top of, uh, that, that makes it a lot easier for us to negotiate instead of for individual freelancers to do it, right? So basically we designed the process to solve a lot of little problems here and there, but the overarching theme, right, behind what we do is we want to remove distractions. We believe that contractual work should be about the contractual work. It should be about, you know, writing the code, uh, getting the design up, that's what you should, that should take up like 99% of your time. So our mission is to get rid of distractions, right? And yeah, make freelancing great again, right? So, <laughs> yep, so yeah, so we're not capable of making America great again, right? So we'll leave that to more capable hands, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> and, and yeah, so, that's the first part of my presentation. Uh, you can find us, find more information on momocentral.com. That's our website. If you want, you can uh, you can stop me and talk to me about uh, anything you want to know later on as well. I'll be around for a while, I think. So that's the first part, right? Uh, so now, uh, now we're going to go into something that's a bit more geeky, I guess. So since this is the PHP meetup, right? So we're gonna. Uh, so so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about something we built, all right? Uh, it's it's a interpreter, right, for a language called Moco M, right, which is some which is a toy language. It's, it's a toy programming language. It's Turing complete and all that, and that we invented. We built the only known instance of its interpreter. Actually, the guy sitting behind there helped us with it. So, yeah. So um, yeah, we make our we we make our candidates uh, do tasks in this language. So that's part of our selection process, right? So, so that's 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 the kind of the function of this interpreter. So I'm going to talk about briefly about how, you know, uh, the implementation details, how it works and stuff like that, 
right? So roughly, you start with source code, right? That's the input of the, the whole program. Uh, we, and then there's a parser that parses it into an intermediary format. We call it RPN instructions because it's mostly in reverse polish notation, if you guys have ever heard of it, it if you guys took programming class before. Right, so I'll get to that while more. And then this intermediary instructions are executed by an execute <coughs> function to produce a program output. Right. So the nice thing about this architecture is that we can, uh, theoretically, if we ever want to, we can change the language, the, the surface language features, the syntax features of the of the uh, that's required by the source code. We just need to change the parser to parse it back into the same uh, RPN instructions, and then we can reuse it, the, the 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 execute mechanism. Right. So the parsing, uh, well, I'm not going to talk about the actual like details of the parser. It's kind of token based and it's mostly string processing, kind of boring stuff, right? But what what we what it basically does is that it changes. Uh, these kind of basic statements into something called RPN format, reverse polish notation, which is that the operator is at the end of the expression, right? So the regular uh, like arithmetic expression is called infix notation, which is that the operators are in between the operands, right? So when you change that to reverse polish, what happens is that the operands come first and then the operator, right? So in this case, this means this one plus this one, and this one minus this one, and so on and so forth, right? And then assignment can be something similar as well. Assign is an operator, right? So in this case, is you assign this to var i, right? And then this one is also, uh, you add one to var i, so on and so forth, right? And function is also an operator. So this, this is what we do to, uh, uh, well this is what the parser does, right? It changes it into RPM. And then uh, for more, how to say special constructs in the language like if if statements we have we basically roll our own data structures that um, that 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 con so for example is else if else if else right will be stored as a data structure that contains an array of uh, conditional expressions right which are RPN which are themselves translated RPN right and as well as an array of blocks which are themselves like translated into lists of RPNs. Right, so, so roughly, basically, uh, conditional one will decide whether block one gets executed. Conditional two will decide whether block two gets executed. Everything. So that's the intermediate format that we store. Functions. Uh, similarly, the we have a data structure that contains the argument names as well as the function body as a block of uh, as a list of RPN instructions, right? and then we assign that to the name of the function. Right, so roughly what happens after the parser goes through everything is that you have the program as a list of RPN instructions and with some of the RPN instructions containing their own kind of nested lists of more RPN instructions. Right, so that's, the, that's, that's, after, that's, that's what happens after the parser is done. So next comes executing, right? So, uh, so, so here's where we uh, talk about why we we put everything in reverse polish notation, right? Because that lets us systematically evaluate very uh, like any kind of com any any kind of expressions, any arithmetic expression with any kind of complexity, right? So, so what you, what you do is you simply go through the expression. If you find a simple data type, you push it on the stack. Simple data types like numbers, you know, booleans, that kind of thing, strings. And if you find an operator, then you pop what you need from the stack for, as operands. And then you apply the, op the, the operation on the, the operands, you get a result, you push that back on the stack. Right? So how it works is, for this example, for example, you, go, you start from the left, right? You find 10, so you push that onto the stack. The stack is the stack data structure, right? And then you find five, you push that, you push five. So the stack now has five and 10 on it, right? Then you find minus, which is an operator. So you pop five, you pop 10, that's your operands. You minus that. And then you get five because ten minus five is five. So you push the result onto the stack. So, so the stack now has five, right? So we continue. We find seven. We push that as well. So the stack now has seven and five. Then we find an operator plus. We pop seven, pop five. We compute twelve, and then we push it back. The final result on the stack is the result of the evaluation, right? So this is how uh, you evaluate RPN instructions basically. And uh, as for stuff like if. Basically, we have it stored in a way that is easy to execute, right? So basically, we just uh, evaluate each conditional, which is themselves each an RPN statement, right? 
So we do the RPN thing for each of the conditional, and, and for the first one for which we find a true statement, uh, a true result, we will execute the block that is corresponds to this condition. So if, for example, conditional two evaluates the true, we will execute block two. And block two is also a list of RPN instructions. So we will just recursively call execute on that, and then go ahead, right? So. Yeah, so if, you, if none of it returns true, then you execute the last one, which is the else block. You, know, you call execute on that list of instructions, so to speak. All right. And uh, for variables, we have a very simple uh, implementation. We literally have a PHP associative array you know, that, is, that functions as a variable table. All right. So what happens is that this will just keep track of all the variable identifier names as keys and their values as values, right? So for example, when you execute an assign statement, right? So this says assign 10 to i, right? So you literally just assign 10 to the key i. So that keeps track of all your variables, right? And later on, when you need it, when you need it to, to evaluate an expression, you just retrieve the key, the value for the key i, and then you use that, right? So that's, that's simple variable uh, support. And then that's kind of for one scope, right? So we have nested scopes as well. For example, when you call a function. So what happens in the nested scope is that you have to, uh, you, have, you, you have to have variable, if variable names in the current scope should take priority over the ones at the parent scope, right? So what we do is we just make a new variable table <laughs> construct. And we reference the old, the current one, in the new one. So, so there's kind of a pointer linking the old VARTAP with the new VARTAP, and then we execute the scope in using the new VARTAP. So when we do a retrieval in the scope, we will check the new VARTAP first for the variable. And if we find a value, then we'll use that value. Only if we don't find it, then we'll go back to the reference to the old VARTAP, and then by, so we will search the outer and outer scope until we get to the global scope. And if we don't find anything, we throw an error. Right, so this is scoping. And one more hoop we jump is that we uh, support closures, which is actually not very hard to do in our, in, in our framework, right? So closures, uh, if you're not familiar with it, it means that uh, your function scope remembers the referencing scope where it is defined. That means at definition time, that's the scope that your function remembers, no matter what you call it. That's what closure basically does. You can kind of Wikipedia it if you need to. But so all we need to do to, do to, to support that is uh, when we execute the function definition, we will kind of, it's, it's basically an assign, right? We make a function object that we assign it to the function name. But when we make the function object, we also add a reference to the bar tab at that point, right? So we remember the variable table at the point of definition. We store it in the function. So when the function is called, we retrieve that, fun that variable table again, and then we add it as a reference to the, to the new function scope so that it remembers, kind of. So when we call a function, we will make a new var variable table with the function's argument names, and then we will, reference, we will reference this back to the variable table that is stored in the function itself, which is what it was, what it was during its definition. Right? So that's how we support closures. So yeah. So I'm kind of mostly done with implementation details. That's kind of the rough idea, right? So I don't think there's a lot more I can talk about it. So so before I finish, I'm just going to end with some thoughts on our implementation and on uh, what, how PHP was like. We, we wrote this in PHP. We wrote this in uh, naked PHP, you could say, which is to say that you know, we didn't use a framework or anything. Right? So it was convenient because uh, PHP is, too, is very powerful in a, in a certain sense, but perhaps it is too convenient. Right? For example, this is, this, is, this is actually copied out of our source code. This is the code for referencing uh, Referencing a new tab to that old tab, to, 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 to a new variable table to an old variable table, and literally, you know, so we actually have just have zero as a special key that stores the previous referencing environment, right? So basically, what happens is that we massively abuse associative arrays, <laughs> right? Which uh, it should either sound familiar to you guys or you guys are a lot more honorable than I am as a programmer, right? So we massively abuse associative arrays, but uh, it's not too bad. Uh, if the, when the code is clear and we comment properly, it's kind of maintainable. Not great, but yeah, it kind of works. Might we have used a framework? Probably not, because uh, this is not, there's, there's, 
there's no M and there's no V in this. It, it literally takes a, source, a piece of source code and it produces output and error messages and stuff, right? So probably we couldn't have really used something different. The downside of using naked PHP is that uh, we literally built our own homebrew auto tests, right? And that's not very nice. Maybe we could have found uh, something that we could hack on, even though we're not using an MVC framework. But we're, I'm not sure if that actually works. But it's a thought. And uh, one one issue that we run into uh, writing an interpreter like that is that we so so if you recall, this thing is actually a tool, a testing tool, right, for our candidates, right. So what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to differentiate if, your can, if the candidate writes efficient code or less efficient code. So if the candidate makes an ON square solution versus an ON solution, we want to know. Right? But the problem is that uh, because we're not exactly experts at you know, the low levels of PHP and how, 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 how like, fundamental PHP uh, operations perform, we can't just time it. At least we won't trust that the result if we just timed it. Right? So, but because of the way we wrote it, we can, what we did was we made an approximation. Because every time you execute a while block, for example, that's a recursive call to the execute function because it's a block and it goes to the execute function. And every time you call a recursive function as well, you will call execute. So we literally can just count the number of times execute is called. And that gives us an idea of what the algorithmic complexity of the solution is. And it turns out that that works pretty well. So we're, that's what we're rolling with currently. And yeah, it's been working OK. Uh, random things we could do because we decided to roll our own print in the printer, we could do random stuff like uh, disable language features, right? We could, uh, for example, there was once where we had a question. It's not there anymore, so so I can talk about it. Right? We, had, we had a question where we get we tried to get people to write Fizzbuzz, the classic problem, without if statements, and we can actually just you know disable if for that question, and then the if just doesn't work, will not work with the interpreter, right? So, but that, that did turn out to be a good question, so we took it away. But yeah, the possibility is, still, is there. We can also do stuff like uh, compute, you know, these metrics like cyclomatic complexity and similar stuff while we're doing the evaluating. And the idea we had originally was that we wanted to see whether any of we could get a collection of metrics that would correlate well to the quality of the code that our candidates submitted. But yeah, we got busy, so we never really pursued that very much. But the data is still there, so that's nice. And. Uh, that's kind of the end. Uh, so, if so, if anybody, so this thing's still running, right? If anybody, you know, is are interested in what we do, you can sign up at mocentral.com. You'll get to end up playing with this because you'll you'll, you'll be asked to write some 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 programming tasks in Moco M, right? So yeah, that's about it. Uh, Again, if 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 you can you can ask you can you can come up to me. If actually, I can ask open the floor for questions now, right? Yeah, so if you have any questions, you can ask me now. Uh, going back to your, your, your original presentation on, uh, on Momo, Momo Central. Central. Yeah. Oops. It really makes it fair for the, uh, for, the, for the people that are doing contract work on uh, software and things like that because they, they work an hour, they get paid for the hour and so mm -hmm. on and so on, and the, the, it cuts out the creep and all that sort of stuff. My, I can see the challenge that you guys would have, though, like with some of the clients, because the clients are always trying to squeeze the, the, the yeah. programmers to get more out of them. So they yeah. might they might not actually like such a rigid system because they're used to being a villain to, to screwing the. Yeah. <laughs> screwing well. The yeah. Well. So, in, uh, in so that department, we do we do kind of have, have an uphill task in terms of convincing clients. But uh, the thing about it is that we believe at least that the math adds up. You know. Uh, you are actually cutting hidden costs, no matter what, right? So, as if we can get, we, if we can get our guys to be conscientious, we can teach our clients to make sure that they are on top of what they do. You will save money, you know. Yep. You will save money. We've had clients who have, who have, who have, who have, who have you know, basically proved to us that they save money. It's actually a job in educating the client of how yes, to yes. do their yeah, own. Yeah, yeah. But the the, the consolation is that we're not selling, you know, any kind of fraud or anything. This is something real. We just need to show it, you know. So yeah, that's 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 that, that's a challenge that we're working on. We, um, yeah. So we don't we don't accept clients who don't accept the terms right now. How how long is how long is this marketplace been going? Uh, om almost two years, I think. Okay. Yeah, almost two years. And before that, we were the agency thing, the nightmare agency thing. Yeah. <laughs> so. Thank you. All right. So.
Uh, anything else? You guys must have had a lot of time to run the compiler. Uh, <laughs> well, actually, so uh, so I'm gonna plug the hung over there. Yeah, you see, freed up so much of your time that you guys get to. Yeah, because yeah. because you know we had this idea, right? And then like uh, we, university was still fresher back then, and then I took a course on programming language, so so I had some idea of how to do it, right? And then along comes uh, this uh, Yi Hang who's sitting over there, right? He happens to be here, so so he was our star intern back in the day. He was still in school, but he was in the Malaysian Informatics Olympiad squad. Yeah, so he came on as an intern, and then we realized that this guy is really good with algorithms. So I just sat down with him, and I told him, okay, this is how to do it, how to do it. And then he wrote, he wrote out like vast swaths of what's yeah. there now. So yeah, we got, we, got, we got that out. We got that out. Yeah, so, yeah. So, ah, yeah. I heard you started with two technical co-founders. Uh, yeah, well, so, um, in the sense that we both we both have technical background because we both used to be in a sweatshop and we both used to be on the ground slaving <laughs> away on client projects, right? So yeah. Although um, I suppose the more technical co-founder would be me. So I, 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 I'm usually in charge of the technical infrastructure and everything. My co-founder, uh, Suyuan, is usually, like she's better with making slides. She doesn't make hidden slides like that. So usually she'll be the one here talking to you guys, but she's not available today, right? So I'm kind of here too, yeah. So yeah, is is is, uh, is that it? Do you have any, any anything else? All right. Okay. So thank uh, thanks a lot. Yeah. So if, yeah. If, yeah.